So today I wanted to make a video about what the best skateboard is. Uh, the first thing I need to do was find a skate shop that has like a huge selection of boards. So I thought what better place to go to than mainline skate shop, as you can tell by their board wall, it literally clears the entire wall. There's, there's literally boards all over the place. So we really have a selection of just about anything you could possibly imagine. Every single question that I asked Cole, hey, do you have this? Hey, do you have that? He said, yep, got that, got that, got that. Cole is someone who rides for Powell Skateboards, a uh, former teammate of mine. I also rode for Powell, this guy right here. Um, we'll see how hard he tries to push Powell on me. We'll, I mean, we'll see. But anyways, I'm going to give you the most honest review I possibly can. Now, I ride for three-block skateboards. They don't sell three-block skateboards here. I actually have a three-block skateboard uh, with me, and I'll talk a little bit about that. But I will give you 100% honest review on what skateboards are the best, what you should look for in a skateboard, and is there really a difference between different board brands? Uh, so we'll start off with uh, a regular skateboard. What, what is like the most price point cheap skateboard that you have? You can get one starting from 35 to 40 on blanks and skate shop. Yeah. Okay, so you said that you didn't have any skate shop boards because you sold out of those, we correct? Did. Okay. So the skate shop boards is basically any local skate shop that you go to. Uh, if it has any bit of a following, they usually have their own skateboard brand. Uh, it's not necessarily to start a team and have like a board company, but it's more about price point boards that customers can afford that are going to be cheaper than the big name brands. But at the end of the day, it's the exact same thing. Same seven plies of wood, always maple. Uh, they're not cutting corners or getting funky with it. There's no conspiracies behind it over like, oh, I got a shop board and it broke easier. If that happens, it's placebo effect. It's the same as any other board. Now with the mini logo, which is these guys, same thing. They're seven ply. They're a normal skateboard. The difference is they don't have a graphic. There's no board graphic on it whatsoever. It's usually just, just plain ply, uh, but they, they skate completely normal. And when people usually get a board with a graphic, a lot of the times that they buy that board is literally for the graphic. So if you get a blank board or a skate shop board or a mini logo board, you're getting a good quality skateboard. Don't let it fool you. Don't think, oh, I'm only paying 30 to $45 for something that I would normally pay $60 for, so it must be less quality. That's not the case with skateboards. They're, for the most part, across the board, if you're getting a skateboard at a skate shop, it is an actual skateboard. But there is variations in technology, especially over the past couple of years. There's been a couple of uh, move forwards. With skateboarding, I feel like this skateboarders have always been very, like, picky with like what we do with skateboards element tried to do this helium board where it was like had like holes in the side and i've seen boards made of metal and boards made of uh that have uh fiberglass through them uh it was, there was a company called libtech that that's what was their gimmick i think they still make boards but they're mostly a snowboard company um all that stuff like it just felt kind of funny so a lot of people weren't really into it but we'll get into the technology in a little bit uh let's look at uh what's a normal skateboard would you say like you a, would say a dwindle it would be basically enjoy, blind, almost, basically anything that starter price point brand that beginners look for. Okay, so like uh, they're big name brands. So like Enjoy has some top name pros on it. Blind has top name pros on it. All those companies, uh, Darkstar is also a part of Twindle. They're all like very legitimate established companies. But they are what you would consider almost a baseline of skateboarding deck companies. They're not like – really, when you get into decks, it really comes down to what's the coolest and what's not the coolest, as lame as that sounds. You really are paying for aesthetic and what you want to support. So if you buy a Baker board, which in a lot of skate shops, they can tend to be a little bit more expensive. Yeah. Um, you're not getting a better product, but what you are getting is – just the graphic you'd like. Yeah, the graphic you'd like and support the company that you like. Now, for me, I would, out of all these boards, I wouldn't mind paying the extra $10, $15 for a Baker board because it's owned by Andrew Reynolds, who has been a huge inspiration to most of skateboarding. He's just a really, like, rad guy. He, like, kind of has a good moral compass, it seems like. He seems like a solid person. He pays his team riders well. Uh, definitely a company that I wouldn't mind throwing a couple extra dollars to to get that board and support that company. And that's really what I base why I'm going to buy a board on for the most part. There's zero skateboards, which it used to be like that. Zero used to be like the number one brand. Oh, like yeah. they used to be the biggest company ever. They had the best team. Uh, but as skateboarding changes and shifts around, they are now more of a core company. They're more of like, a, they're huge in San Diego. And don't get me wrong, everyone still knows what zero skateboards are. But they're no longer 
the king of the castle. It used to be how gnarly you were would decide whether your company was cool or not. And now it's almost like how aesthetically pleasing you are, which is kind of bring us into the next type of board graphic or the next type of skateboard. Uh, and that'd be something like Polar. Yeah. Uh, as you can see, the graphics very like artistic. Uh, you can usually tell uh, board companies worth by the pros that are on the team uh, because I've never heard of that person. <laughs> And usually that means they're like, whoa, you have a bunch of them. Yeah. So they're a little bit more underground, but they're usually like, I don't know. They have like a, what is that? Like this. Oh yeah, that graphic's sick. Yeah. They have definitely like an underground following that kind of gives them like a, uh, I don't know, kind of like a more legit vibe to them. Like people really like are down for Polar. Uh, so the skateboards tend to be a little bit bigger. They're also from overseas. Polar is, yeah. what, 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 what country do you know? Is it uh, England? England. I th we're, I'm pretty sure it's England. So it's a company based out of England. They, they're killing it over there. I think they took a lot of riders from when Blueprint went under. Yeah. Um, they got some super rad skaters on the team. And their wood does cost a little bit more. Their, their wood does. So it is a different type of wood. It is a different type of wood. Very. Oh yeah, because it's so it's overseas. So they're probably overseas. not doing. Uh... They're not doing China nor Mexico wood. Oh, okay. Interesting. Interesting. So they're doing their own little thing over there. Okay. And, and you could see by the color flies, like they they don't mess around. Really. It's really good to see that they're doing something different. Oh, yeah. I didn't even think about that. That is sick. Yeah, I really always pay attention to it. It's like, wow. Their quality on their wood is different than a Dwindle wood or than a Zero wood or than even a Mini Logo wood. Yeah. So it could actually, it could be superior, you're Probably, saying. Yeah. It, it could very much be Maybe. superior. Um, there's also companies, more niche companies. There's a company called Carpet Skateboards, which is actually owned by my friends, uh, Eamon and Osama. They live in Washington, D.C. And they, like, hand screen all their stuff and they put, like, mm extra effort into it like they had like these boards that had like glitter in them and like all kinds of like the aesthetic of them and you get these they come in these cool like zip bags and they cost more but you're getting like i don't know more of like a uh i don't want to say quality product because i don't want to be misleading but yeah. a product that w had a lot more care put into it so is that product going to make you kickflip better probably not but is that product way cooler to have in my opinion yeah i think so i i, I think that kind of stuff is i don't know more exciting to me to look at when I know that someone put a lot of care into the skateboard. Um, there's also companies like FA and Hockey Skateboards, uh, and those boards are always more expensive. Their graphics are a little bit more complicated. So the quality of the wood, I don't know if it's any better or any worse, but I know that the quality of the graphics, sometimes they have like holographic boards that are like change when you like change your angle, and sometimes the bottom of the board is kind of raised to have like designs that stick out. So you're paying more for that side of things, more for the technology of the artistic side of the skateboard, not for the skateboarding quality of the thing, which is pretty interesting and sort of a new concept that, that kind of really came out in the past couple of years where you're getting, you're paying more money for something that's a little bit different. Another version of that, another version of paying a little bit more money for just having a slightly, a slight variance on a skateboard is board shapes. Uh, board shapes really became cool uh, a couple years ago, I, I really blame Welcome Skateboards for this. Uh, they had a really insane team, and I think when I found out that they didn't actually make a classic popsicle shape, which is the shape that most boards are, they only do weird shape boards, uh, they ended up putting together a team that was like super incredible skating these shape boards, and uh, it just kind of became like its own thing. People were super stoked on shape boards. Sometimes I ride shape boards. I'm a sucker for it. There's a kid on PAL named Chris who only skates the PAL Peralta shape boards, um, but here's a couple examples. We got, this is a company called, uh, heroin skateboards. Uh, don't let the name fool you. Like their whole gimmick is F drugs, let's skate. It's very much an anti-drug, uh, company. And the idea that skateboarding is like the only drug that they care about. The owner of it's a really awesome dude. I only hear great things about him. I don't think I've ever met him, but I know he skates a lot of curbs. So the owner skates, if the owner skates, you know, the company's probably sick. It's shape. It's, it's nose goes a little bit more pointy. Wait, let me zoom in. Its nose goes a little bit more pointy. The tail's a little bit uh, – actually, it has kind of a regular tail, and the, but the, the, the angle of it constantly tapers. It's like an egg shape. So usually a skateboard's like a straight line. This one is a little different. This is, is this a welcome board right here? Okay, sick. So this is one of the companies that kind of started it all. Good quality wood. Uh, as you can tell, the tail is squared off. Uh, what does that do for skateboarding? Do these shapes actually mean anything? Some would argue that a square tail would help you with tail blocks. Some would argue that a bigger nose would help you catch your foot with ollies. It's really personal preference. I think it's all bull crap. You get used to whatever you skate. Then you can get to a board like this, which is obviously just for fun. This is evidently a very 
custom board that was, was it Baker that gave you guys? Yeah. Baker Skateboards gave this skate shop to uh, just do stuff with kids and like hand out boards to kids. It's a very like unique custom shape that was for a pro skater named Spanky. As you can tell, all these ripples, there's no real purpose for them other than it looks cool. It's something different to look down at. This isn't going to help you learn any tricks, but it's going to be, I don't know, a unique experience if you ask me. It's cool that it has like the fishtail. I'm assuming the bottom of the board, yep, and the bottom of the board is insane. Uh, moving on to... Uh, the board technology, which is kind of, in my opinion, what really separates skateboards from having a really neat aesthetic and whether they're cool or not cool to skateboards that are actually better than other skateboards. Yes, some skateboarders are actually better than other skateboards. Uh, I know that the polar board, we're not really sure if that wood makes it better, but with these, I am 1000% positive that they are better than other skateboards. And that really comes down to uh, these two versions, these two boards that we're going to talk about right here, you can set that one here too. This is actually another one. Um, so this, this is the first company to do something the way that they did it. So there's been fiberglass and skateboards and all sorts of board technology done before. Usually frowned upon, usually doesn't work out that good. No one could really get it right. Because when you add fiberglass to a board, it makes it pop different. It makes it feel different. It makes it sound different. And like I said, skateboarders are very picky. But these right here, these skateboards right here, these are called the Pal Peralta flight decks. And what they are is they're basically a normal skateboard with two special plies inside that without like giving away the technology that's behind it because it's like patented and all this stuff, it literally makes it so your board like will not break. If you go online and you search Pal Peralta flight deck, you will see endless videos of people just running their skateboards over with cars and the board's just not breaking. And the way that they managed to do that, is that a board that got ran over? Yeah. Mine. Yeah, here's a here's a Pal Peralta in use right here. Yeah. Uh, it's a month old. It's a month old and it's still good. It you, he he had to re grip his board. That's how long they last. What you might be wondering to yourself is, well, what makes this one different? Why is it not funky sound or anything like that? Well, the difference between this one and most other boards is the way that they have the new construction inside the board. It's two separate layers of it, and it actually makes it so. When you do an ollie, every single time you ollie, your board's made of wood. Those particles are like bending. The, the wood is actually breaking ever so slightly every single time you step on that board and do a trick. But with this, it's reinforced in a crazy way that if you ever break one of these boards and you actually like see what's inside of them, you're going to be like, oh, that's insane. Like it's pretty complicated. But they're, they're put together in a pretty crazy way that – uh, it's not going to give. It doesn't lose its pop. You can do a thousand kickflips on the skateboard and the tail never gets soggy. These boards never, ever, ever get soggy. You never break them. And another thing about them is the way that the plies run, uh, they chip differently. So if you see a kid's skateboard, a lot of times when it's older, they'll have like a bunch of chips all over the nose and tail, like a chunk will be missing here, a chunk will be missing here, uh, huge dents here. With these boards... These, the nose and tail very rarely chip. It's, it's, it's kind of bizarre. The w place that you do get chips is sometimes on the side, which in my opinion bothers me a lot less. Was this another used one? Yeah, this is one that I broke off the Hollywood 12. Oh, you actually broke that one skating? Yes. But now here's the thing about that. Yeah, so look. So look, he broke this board, right? There's, there's, there's cracks in it. But it only ever, when you break these things, it only goes through like the first layer. First layer. Yeah, at the most, two layers. And you can continue to skate them because, like, the fiberglass strength in it is pretty ridiculous. And that's him skating the Hollywood 12. What were you trying? Double kickflip. And did you, what, did you land dead in the middle? Yeah, I landed dead in the middle, but I still landed it with this board. So he did that dead in the middle, cracked the board all the way through, continued to skate, landed the double flip, down a 12 stair, and the board was still good. Yes. If that's any testament to how insane these boards are. Um, now, once again, you get what you – now, and actually, in this case, you do get what you pay for. Uh, flight decks are more expensive than a lot of other skateboards because they're going to last a lifetime of two to three skateboards for you, provided you actually like take care of it and you know, you're not super reckless with it and you're not driving cars over it every chance you get. Um, like anything, you know, nothing's unbreakable. There is a threshold to where you will destroy these, but you will not find that threshold skateboarding normally. It'd be pretty ridiculous for you to break one of these actually skateboarding to where it'd be like a done board. Um, I've never cracked one of those and I've jumped down plenty of stuff on, on this type of board. Uh, now here, these are called the VX boards or VX decks. This is a Santa Cruz board and they also have a very similar technology. Now I personally haven't 
skated this board. I've never skated the Santa Cruz board. In fact, I wasn't too familiar with the Santa Cruz board uh, until very, very recently. Very, very recently. But what I can do when I look at it is I can see that the way that the layering's done on the top layer, and it looks strikingly familiar. And the way that they describe the five plies of American Maple, the two layers of Quad X technology, thinner, stronger, and more, and with more pop, thinner, stronger, and with more pop, that sounds a lot like the flight deck. It sounds like it's the same technology, just in a Santa Cruz skateboard. Now, Pal Peralta and Santa Cruz have been at the forefront for board technology for as long as I can remember. Uh, you know, uh, Pal Skateboards is out of uh, Skate One Distribution, so they also have Bones Wheels, which is like the best wheels, whereas Santa Cruz has, you know, independent trucks, which is like the best truck in my opinion. So... It makes sense that these two board companies are kind of battling it out for, like, the future of skateboarding technologies. Uh, what's kind of cool about Pal Peralta, though, is they also branch off into shaved decks that are also uh, the, 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 the flight deck technology. So you can get kind of funky with that and also have a board that lasts forever. There's also the Andy Anderson board, which has a very, very, very specific shape. Um, very specific shape. And if you just... YouTube or Google Andy Anderson's Pro Model board shape, there's all sorts of videos describing every single detail of that skateboard. Now, with all that being said, it's really up to you to what the best skateboard for you is, but as far as what is the best skateboard for quality and longevity, it's gonna be a flight deck or one of those VX boards, and I'm sure some of the other skateboarding companies are finally starting to adopt this technology that I believe Pal Peralta started. Um, there's also, you know, what company you want to support. So I ride for three block skateboards. Now three block skateboards actually has a pretty good price point on them as well. They, uh, sell for cheaper online. That's where the majority of three block and revived skateboards are sold. High quality board, awesome shapes. Uh, I'm a huge fan of the nose on, uh, three block skateboards. It's just usually has like a bigger nose and the taper of it's just perfect. Uh, I, I hate boards with tiny noses. Um, but they also have like more of a twin nose, t twin tails shape board too, but I'm not a fan of that one. But their, their regular board shape, oh, it's absolutely perfect. Uh, so you can obviously check those out. I'll link those in the description because uh, that's the company that I ride for. And I honestly would not send you to get a crappy skateboard because I don't get a million comments saying, hey, that board that you sent me is really crappy. So I don't want that. I'm only going to send you to a board company that I truly believe in. And I actually rode for Pal Peralta, which makes the flight deck. And I went to three block skateboards, not because their boards weren't good, but because I do believe in the company. And I think even though I'm not going to get to skate those insanely incredible flight decks, I'm still getting a very good quality board. Uh, yeah. So out of all these boards, you know, the best board is going to be the ones with the the, that new technology, but at, at the end of the day, if you like a graphic, you're not crazy for buying a board just based on its graphic. Most board companies are done out of the same wood shops. They're, both, they're all done out of a lot of the same wood pressing places. There's basically four or five major ones that almost every major company is done out of, uh, like Schmidt Sticks and stuff like that. I mean, Schmidt Sticks alone covers an insane amount of boards. So really... I would go based on what graphic you like the most, unless you're willing to spend the extra money to get the more, unless you're willing to spend the extra money to get the technology, or you want to spend the extra money for having a kind of a goofy, fun board shape, which uh, I also recommend doing every once in a while. Having a board with a fun board shape is always great. But that's pretty much my review for all board companies. I've been skating for 20 years. I, off I really do know what I'm talking about. I've skated like just about every single skateboard brand. Variance is very, very slight. Uh, if you like this video and you'd like to see reviews on other things like shoes and trucks and stuff like that, I have a lot to say about all those as well. Uh, just let me know and maybe I'll make those too. Uh, until next time.